Once upon a time, there was a little queen who dreamed of being famous. At 30-something, she was discovered, and her career took off. Too bad 10 years later, her tea would spoil it all. You better tell it. Andy, Freddie too. What's a girl to do? Every week, you just don't know. 
This has been a public service announcement, serving the kids across the country. You better wake up and smell the test results and stop believing all those Adam profiles. Else you might end up with a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, my truth, my team, it's out there for the world to see. Can you say that? And remember, Miss Electra told you, you better follow Angina's lead, honey. So welcome, Jade Electra, to Black Gay Men's Blog. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Uh, first of all, I just want to say thank you for uh, posting the video HI Vogue on uh, Black Gay Men's Blog Facebook page because I hadn't seen it. So thank you very much for doing that. Uh, sure, sure, sure. And for those who don't know you, I mean, I know who you are because I live in New York, so I know who Jade Electra is. Uh, but for those who don't know you, can you just tell us briefly who you are and, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I'm actually, um, my real name is Alfonso Team Jr. And I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. I moved to uh, New York in 92. Okay. And um, actually, what, probably four years, or no, three years after I found out I was positive, actually. And um, um, I, it's weird, uh, when I got to New York, I sort of kind of landed in the middle of, I guess, what was left of the cast as um, Paris is Burning. Right. And uh, I was taken in by a queen named the Electrifying Grace, mm -hmm. and we lived downstairs from uh, Paris Dupree. Okay. And, and uh, so I sort of kind of got acclimated really quickly to the New York ballroom scene and a uh, couple of beige, like, took me in as an honorary member of the House of LaBeja, and it was, it was a pretty wild time, like, especially for someone coming from Tampa, Florida, where, like, I had only seen the movie, so, like, out of nowhere, I was in the middle of all of it, and, uh, I, you know, I watched a lot of people that I, I met early on pass away. Like, so, um, before we go into the HIV Vogue, uh, I just want to, you've been You've been HIV positive for like 20 plus years, I believe? Uh, 22. 22, 22. And I know this is important to me because I know sometimes, you know, in our community especially, there's still people who, you know, think, oh, HIV means death. So when I talk to people like yourself, I just, you know, would like you to mention something about that, like, you know, surviving for so long with HIV. I mean, some of us know it's possible, but you know, there's two people out there who think, you know. Uh, well, you know, the thing about it is that when I found out back then, yeah, it, it seemed as though it was a death sentence. Mm -hmm. And and also, I did something that was not uh, very, I guess, conventional. Um, I, did, I refused to take the meds. The only thing that was available back then was AZT. AZT. Mm -hmm.